here we're back with the Meta Quest 3, and in this video we're gonna compare with its predecessor, the Meta Quest 2. But why just now? Well, I've been using the Meta Quest 3 from a while right now. A lot of games actually receive updates, who actually utilize completely the new processor. And also, if you're watching early, we're approaching now Black Friday. And well, the price of the two went down drastically for this season, put it a dent on my usual suggestion. So given this new very low price, is it still worth it to recommend with this new guy on the market? So this video is for you if you're planning to upgrade from the Quest 2 to the Quest 3 or if it wants to be your first time in VR and uh, you don't know if to get the new guy or if it's actually worth it to save money for a much cheaper guy over here. So well, let's discover it together in this video. Let's get to the bottom of it. Let's get into it. All right, here we are. So as always, comparing these two behemoths of standalone headsets is not an easy task. That's why I decided to divide this video in different sections, like always, and we're gonna give a point to one or another if they're better as something or not. I'm gonna leave the points overlaid the entire time over here so we can keep track of it together. And at the end of the video, we're for sure gonna have a winner. I think. Remember also that every point will have a different value for every person watching. So at the end of the day, you can make your own results, let's say. Let's start with comfort. And talking about comfort, you might notice that both of these guys don't have the strap they came with. That's because, yeah, out of the box, comfort, it's pretty bad. And this reminds me that this video is sponsored by Obika. I actually been using the Obika battery strap on the Quest 2 for the longest time and it just came out with a new version for the Meta Quest 3. As you can see, I actually love this brand because it's the most similar to the original version. Also, this year we have the possibility to swivel the strap all around, take less room when you want to store it, of course, and at the same time to wear it in a more comfortable and balanced way. Why a hard strap with the battery? Well, for two main reasons. One, because then we have a much longer better life and you can play for longer sessions of course and at the same time for a better weight balance so having more weight on the back is gonna have a 50 50 weight distribution situation as you can see it's gonna feel much more comfortable and light on your head even if it's a bit heavier physics they, by the way, make so many new products, so check them out in the link in the description below. So yeah, you have my blessing on it. Thanks to Ubika for sponsoring this video and back to the comparison. As we were saying, both of these headsets come with a cloth strap that is not the best. They actually improved it a bit on the Quest 3, but even if the headset is smaller, it's still always front heavy because we have the battery, every single hardware part in the front. That makes it a bit more livable compared to the Meta Quest 2 that can feel more like a brick on your face, but yeah, in both ways they're kind of bad. If I have to give a winner though, I'm gonna say the Quest 3 is a that little tiny better that you can survive for a month or two. But yeah, definitely consider getting something. So first point to the Quest 3. And now let's talk about build quality. This one is pretty similar to be honest. Both feel very sturdy and good to be made of plastic. This is a very old Quest 2 with 64 gigabytes, so the very, very old version, and it's still holding up pretty well, so that means that the build quality was actually pretty good. And uh, yeah, I expect the same from the Quest 3, that uh, looks uh, pretty much the same and just a bit smaller. Not much to say here, so... That's a tie. But now let's talk about design. Here we're not actually talking about the look because that may be very subjective. I think that the Quest 3 looks very particular, but probably not the nicest looking thing around. And the Quest 2 is the big white chunk on your face, pretty much. What they both try to achieve though is the lowest price point yet for the technologies that they have inside. And I think that the Quest 2 achieved it better just because the price point from the very beginning was much cheaper than what the Quest 3 is right now. So yeah, my point goes to the Quest 2 this time. But now let's start to talk about the big stuff and let's talk about the display. Well, the Meta Quest 2 has a single LCD display with a resolution of 1832 by 1920 per eye, running up to 120 Hz. Instead, the Meta Quest 3 has two LCD displays with a resolution of 2064 by 2208 per eye, running up to 120 Hz. I went very in depth comparing these two headsets in my True Lenses videos that you can check in the description below. 
uh, or at the end of the video, of course, in the suggestions. So check them out if you want to know more, but talking strictly about the display, well, the Quest 3 has a higher resolution, has better contrast and better colors, and it's just a better viewing experience on the Quest 3 than the Quest 2. So yeah, the point goes to the Quest 3. But hey, what's the actual additional perk of the two displays on the Quest 3 compared to the Quest 2? Well, it's actually the APD. Having two displays means that you can move them left or right to actually match the position of your eyes perfectly because this one on the Quest 3 actually has a wheel and you can move it a millimeter accuracy, something that weirdly was dropped on the Quest 2 to make it cheaper with just three different positions. I always hated that thing. So I'm glad they went back with the Quest 3 and this is a big win and a big point for the Quest 3 because it's completely necessary to have a good APD adjustment in VR headsets. So the point there, even if it's even less needed because we have the new lenses. If I could give 10 points to the Quest 3 right now, I would, because here we have new generation pancake lenses. These things are the killer feature of this headset. That means that you can look around in almost the entire area and have perfect clarity without any problem. That means that on the downside, we're gonna see also more screen door effects, so the distance between the pixels that we weren't seeing much on the Quest 2, mostly because we have much more clarity. In fact, the Quest 2 uses the old Fresnel lenses that are great when you look in the middle, but well, the image breaks up pretty fast when looking at the edges if you're not really in the perfect sweet spot. I mean, there's no really comparison between the two over here. The Quest 3 is hands down 30 times better, uh, but yeah, we're gonna give one point over there. And now let's talk about FOV, so the field of view. These lenses, of course, are better also in that because the field of view is actually larger on the MetaQuest 3 compared to the MetaQuest 2, arriving at 110 degrees. That is very, very good. And there's also the fact that those 107 degrees are pretty much entirely readable and enjoyable compared to the older ones that they were getting a little blurry. Just bear in mind that on the Quest 3, you're gonna have a bit of vignetting effect because of these lenses, but I will take it anytime compared to the smaller field of view and uh, well, the lower readability. FOV is bigger, immersion is better, so yeah point to the Quest 3. And it's now time to talk about the controllers. The new version of the controllers is much slicker than what we had before. First of all, we don't have the rings, so they never get in the way. That's a very good thing. And also at the same time, we have new optics that feels much better on the new controller. So they managed to make smaller, better, and keep the same battery life. So yeah, the point goes to the Quest 3, but they have a bit of a downside and uh, that's a tracking. Talking about tracking, of course, we talk about the controllers and the headset. About the headsets, they have pretty much the same tracking. Uh, there's no really any difference. Talking about the controller tracking, well, the rings for sure helped having a better tracking than what we have right now on the Quest 3. One of the perks of the Quest 3 that is gonna track the controller while also using the hand tracking to ensure that it's the right position all the time. Instead, on the Quest 2, it relies just on the view of those rings and of the IR sensors inside them. They both have IR sensors, by the way. On the Quest 3, they're just hidden over here. And while in everyday use, they're both very, very good, so there's no problem at all. I actually had some problems with these using gun stocks, where sometime I will lose the tracking a bit and will be a bit shaky. So in this case, the old way was a bit more reliable. So yeah, the point goes to the Quest 2. Talking about audio, they both have integrated speakers on the side. You can see the openings on the bottom, by the way, on both of them. The difference on the Quest 3, we actually have two openings on the top as well for the bass. So uh, the sound is a bit better over here than comparing to the Quest 2. Nothing crazy, kind of minimal, but it is better. So the point goes to the Quest 3. Talking about battery life, I'm gonna be very brief. They are pretty much the same with two and a half, three hours of playtime. Depends on the game, of course. Sometimes it can go even lower. So yeah, 
This is the time. But now let's get to another important part. This is the processor. Well, this is where the big generational leap actually happens. On the Quest 2, we had the Snapdragon XR2. But now we finally have its successor from Qualcomm, the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2. This is much faster than the previous generation. It's gonna make possible to have much bigger games in the future. But right now that you have pretty much the same games, it's gonna make it possible to have better graphics because we have much more powerful GPU in here. Also, everything feels much snappier and you scroll around and everything feels absolutely fantastic. It really feels like a new generational leap. So yeah, the point goes to the Quest 3. But now let's talk about software because these two both run on the same software, of course, then the, is the Meta OS based on Android. And I have to say there's no much to say over here. Yes, because of the processor, this feels snappier and uh, easier to scroll around, but you can have the same features from one to the other, no difference at all right now, besides some custom room mapping because of the depth sensor. So yeah, the situation over here is even. Let's give it a tie. What's not a tie is actually the games because yes, these for now run the exact same game. So you're not gonna see games that arrive just to the Quest 3 and not on the Quest 2 for now and for years, it seems, because of course a lot of the population as still the Quest 2, so you're gonna see a lot of games supporting it, even in the future. But I would say that games looks miles better on the new headset. Having a better processor, having a better screen, well, the same games will run faster, will look better at higher resolution, with uh, better shadows, with better environments and everything. Something that most of the time feels like a remastered of the same game. So yeah, talking about games, the Quest 3 is better even if they're still the same. So the points goes there. And that's all without even counting the mixed reality games coming for here with a new pass-through. Because here the difference is very, very stark on the Quest 2, we actually have, a, yes, a 3D pass-through, but completely black and white and a very low resolution. You're completely legally blind when using this around. Instead, on the Quest 3, we have a much better resolution. It's not a retina quality, of course, but we have a good sense of depth and also, of course, colors. This is a true analysis representation. I feel like it speaks by itself of how much better it's gonna be. Also, to play mixed reality games, on this one, you're gonna feel immersed and in the environment instead in here gonna feel like a, in a film noir it makes sense for some games but yeah it's not the best let's say so the point goes to the quest 3. all right we're getting close to the end me and many other people are actually using these headsets to play pc vr games so let's talk about link and pc vr capabilities and i have to say that here the point goes to the quest 3 for a reason, better processor means that we have a better decoding and encoding where we actually send the video signal from the PC to here. So yeah, PC VR can have much higher bit rate, so better clarity, better color, and also better codecs like the AV1 that is supported on here. So yeah, link per se is pretty much the same, but we're talking about virtual desktop. Well, you can use all the capabilities of this new chipset with the Quest 3 instead with the Quest 2 is still good, but well, this is better, point there. And now let's talk about modability. Well, these two are pretty similar as the design, as we said, so they were designed to be modded completely. I'm pretty sure that in the future, they're gonna be even because every manufacturer is actually working right now to mod the Quest 3. But in this very same moment, we have much more mods available for the Quest 2 than for the Quest 3 not just to buy, but also on the 3D printing community and something like that. So maybe I just wanna give a point to the Quest 2 that is a bit dry over there, but yeah, <laughs> the point goes there. Congrats, little guy, you're moddable. And it's time for the last one and the big one. Let's talk about pricing. While talking about the base models, the Quest 3 is gonna be available for 499 at 128 gigabyte. Instead, the Quest 2 in this moment is available for $250 and offer for Black Friday with also if you buy it on Amazon on $50 on Amazon gift card when you buy it or $50 in content when you buy it on Meta that means that it brings the price down to 200 that is much less than half of the Quest 3. I will give 10 points to the Quest 2 because well at this price it's really a steal from what you're getting but yeah I'm gonna have to give a point because that's the rule of this video so the point goes to the cheaper one the Quest 2. And we have a winner with 11 points, 
Didn't matter. Quest 3. Congrats! 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 So, is the Quest 3 better than the Quest 2? Well, as we said over the beginning, yes, this is a very worthy successor. It's better in pretty much everything it needs to be better at and it's really worth every single penny if you want to get it this is no doubt the better standalone headset to get in 2023 and also probably 2024 a lot of games and mixed reality games will be developed for this so yeah you're in good hands for years if you buy this thing but the real question does this make the quest 2 a bad headset to get right now well the reality is that the more i think about it the better this headset actually looks. At $200, this is an incredible price point to have. It works very well. Accessories are gonna be extra cheap because now everyone is building for the Quest 3. And you have years of refinement and the same games that are available on the Quest 3 will run on the Quest 2 right now without any problem. Yeah, they're gonna look a bit blurrier. They're not gonna look the best also because of the lenses, but I enjoyed this thing for many years and I can still enjoy it right now without any problem. So I would say if you're curious about VR, $200 is nothing for what you get. And maybe in the used market, you can find it for even less. It's a great headset to get. You're gonna have a great experience with it. But if you're really serious about VR, well, the Quest 3 really hits the spot. You're gonna be very safe for many years. You're gonna try mixed reality experiences in a great way. And you're gonna be able to start to use it also for productivity and other things and not just for gaming, like the Quest 2. I think the lineup is so awesome in this period and know that these two can coexist at the same time. It's super exciting and I love where we got with VR. So yeah, for sure we have a winner. We have a great successor, but look for the little guy too. It's not that bad. But anyway, guys, here we have it with this comparison. I hope it helped and it didn't give you even more confusion than what we had before. Please let me know if you decided to give different points to one or the other, depends on the different sections. And uh, what is your idea? Is $200 a very good price point or you would still go for the $600 one? Let me know what you think about it. As always though, if you liked the video like, if you didn't like the video dislike, subscribe to the channel for more VR tech, for the love of the channel, join the button there, don't further also the Patreon, thanks to all the patrons, join the channel of course, and I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, ciao!